Hello, and welcome to Chapter 5 of Book 2 on The Big Answer, the single biggest answer to life's biggest questions. If you haven't, please start with the video titled Book 1, intro to The Big Answer, and work through the Book 1 chapters after that before starting on Book 2. In this video, we're going to more deeply explore the qualities of stability and distinctiveness as they're used in TBA, starting with stability. First, let's acknowledge that when people say something is stable, they often mean that it is rigid, unmoving, or unchanging. TBA's definition doesn't include these concepts at all. Stable, as used in TBA, just refers to something's inherent resistance to deterioration or destruction. This means something's stability can't possibly be a cause of its collapse. For example, if you say a bridge that's too stable will be more likely to collapse in an earthquake, that's exactly the wrong definition of stable. A bridge or building that can flex and sway in an earthquake is more stable by TBA's definition than if they were rigid. A person that can adapt to changing circumstances is more stable than someone who insists on things being a certain way and refusing to change how they do things. A person who is a jack of all trades and spends a year as a cook, the next year as a dock worker, the next year doing small home renovations, the next year planting trees, etc. is potentially more stable than the person who spent the last 30 years in a highly specialized career but who has no other skills. This highlights another important point. While the seven qualities all support something's principles, the principles themselves are not important. They can change. As long as the seven qualities are all still present to the same degree, the change is neutral. If the seven qualities increase as a result of the change, that's actually good. So a couple that started dating in their teens can change their relationship drastically over time as they need to adapt to one moving away for school for a few years, then moving in together, working and handling finances, then adding kids to the mix, then being empty nesters, then retiring, etc. When they're in their 80s, their relationship will look quite different than when they were teenagers. If their relationship couldn't change, grow, and adapt, it would have fallen apart. A society that grows and thrives through the introduction of new technology, new social norms, changing governments, challenges from neighboring countries, etc. is stable, even if after a couple thousand years it looks almost completely different. As long as the number of principles stays roughly the same or increases, complexity stays the same. If those principles are followed just as well or even better, there's the same amount of order and if it also maintains its distinctiveness and dynamics and can be just as resourceful and efficient, then it is stable. Note that there's no single strategy that achieves any of these goals better than every other strategy. Context is incredibly important. For example, mature trees are stable because they have deep roots, stiff trunks, thick bark, and are taller so catch more sun. Young trees are inferior in almost every way from a stability standpoint. Unless there's an avalanche, in which case the small, supple, younger trees will merely bend as it passes, while the larger trees will snap and be carried off down the mountain. Because of the fact that different strategies are more stable in certain circumstances and less in others, it's quite difficult to say exactly how stable something is or which stability strategy is better. If you look at a wealthy person, another person with lots of friends and family, and a person who likes the hermit life in the woods, they all represent different stability strategies. How would you rank their stability strategies if there was an epidemic, a drought, a financial collapse? The rankings would be different for each of these, right? I will stress again, the goal of TBA isn't to come up with the best strategy, but to have many good strategies all being used simultaneously. Now, on to distinctiveness. Distinctiveness, for the purposes of TBA, refers to something acting as a unique independent whole. For example, an atom acts as a whole. Particles interacting with it don't interact with just an electron or just a neutron. Two people in a relationship can act as a whole. 
Pat and Steve become Pat and Steve. They can own a house together, file taxes together, and they get invited to weddings or potlucks as Pat and Steve. As another example, a country can act as a whole that represents all the people within the country when it interacts with outside companies and countries, such as when negotiating or establishing trade or setting tariffs. If the atom decays, that's a pretty obvious example of it losing its distinctiveness and no longer existing. But what about deterioration? If a couple stops acting as a coherent unit, that would signal that the couple is experiencing deterioration. Pat has to explain why Steve isn't coming to the family reunion. Steve files their taxes separately this year, and they start dividing their assets and taking separate vacations, etc. They may still technically be together, but the deterioration would be noticed. Similarly, if the people in a country started acting independently, making deals directly with outside countries, using different forms of currency than the country's fiat currency, if towns started making their own rules and not recognizing the authority of the state, etc., that would all be signs that a country is losing its distinctiveness. It's no longer acting as a coherent, independent whole. Another way something can lose its distinctiveness is by becoming part of a larger whole. If you picture a society where everyone dresses the same, listens to the same music, watches the same TV shows, and has the same views on literally everything, then what's lost is each person's distinctiveness. We inherently, instinctively understand this to be bad. Even within a family, people who might otherwise be similar will change to create differences. If you put two people who are highly similar into a situation together, they will immediately start differentiating themselves. One will become more of a leader and the other will become more of a follower, for example, regardless of whether they both started out as leaders or followers. But didn't we just talk about how a relationship or country deteriorating into a bunch of individuals is bad? Yes, both are true. The best outcome would be a society that could incorporate and unify and support individuals with as much variety as possible, with that diversity, in turn, maximally benefiting the society. There is no healthy, thriving ecosystem that consists of only one or a few organisms. A painting or a song isn't automatically better the fewer colors or notes you use. You can't make a car out of just a few different kinds of parts. The goal is to foster the kinds of differences that are mutually beneficial and create a whole that can best support and utilize the natural variation present in the parts, people in the case of a society. Ok, so far we've covered order, complexity, stability, and distinctiveness. These four qualities are fundamentally necessary for anything and everything to exist. You can't say something exists that doesn't have principles, or the features, characteristics, properties, and behaviors that they give rise to. What is it? Where is it? How big is it? What does it do? How does it interact with or compare to anything else that exists? If you can't answer any of these questions, it doesn't exist. So order is a necessary quality of anything that exists. And since everything has more than zero principles, everything has to have at least that minimum amount of complexity. Though everything that exists has far more than just one principle. Order and complexity are pretty straightforward and easy to see why they're necessary for existence. Let's look at stability. When it comes to defining existence, not only does something have to be stable, but that stability also needs to be inherent to the thing itself. It has to be able to resist deterioration when something external tries to undermine it. A line of red Austin minis might seem like a something, but if, at the next intersection, some get cut off from the rest by the red light, and when it goes green one turns left, one turns right, one speeds off and one accelerates slowly, then it was just a random confluence of Austin Minis. However, if the ones that make it through the light pull over and wait, and when the light goes green, they all reform into a line again and resist people changing into their lane that would interrupt the line, then that stability shows that it is, in fact, a something. It's not just random. 
organisms, relationships, societies, businesses, ecosystems, etc. all display this inherent stability, but it is a criterion for everything that can be said to exist. Rivers, atoms, a rock, a planet, etc. are all stable to some degree. A pile of sand, a cloud that happens to look like a bunny, the air inside a balloon, none of that exists as an independent whole entity. As soon as anything happens to disrupt the sand pile, the bunny, or the air, it will immediately disperse without any resistance. Just because the sand pile will happily sit there for billions of years doesn't mean it's stable, since there's nothing inherently keeping it in that pile. Now the sand pile, the bunny, and the air inside a balloon can all be distinct, so just because something displays a single one of these four qualities doesn't mean it is something that exists. It needs to have all four of them. Similarly, something that is orderly, complex and stable, but which lacks distinctiveness can't be said to exist. For example, take a brand new factory opening up and hiring a thousand workers. While the company exists as an independent whole, each worker is a single part in that whole. And while their interactions would be orderly, complex and stable, they would have to organize into something like a union for them to exist as an independent whole. Now the company can't just negotiate with each individual worker, it has to negotiate with the union, the new entity that is a distinct, independent whole in its own right. Two people who randomly meet can interact in an orderly, complex and stable way, but they aren't automatically a couple, for that they need that element of distinctiveness. Now, the cool thing is that these can also be applied to collective actions where the physical parts involved are not, themselves, a permanent part of the whole. For example, a wave isn't a single group of water molecules moving across the surface, it is a force rolling through them. Your body's cells and atoms are constantly being replaced, but you're still you. A society can survive beyond the death of the people that make it up, since they're replaced by a younger generation that keeps it going. In this way, TBA can be applied to a wide range of things we would say exist, even though they don't have a physical component. A song or a worldview or a truth still exist by this definition. More on how this model works is a better definition of truth in a future video. Hopefully from these examples, this is all clear so far. As I mentioned, these four qualities are necessary for literally everything to be said to exist right down to the most fundamental elemental particles. In the next video, we'll be looking at dynamics, which is necessary for any whole made of smaller parts. In other words, everything larger than the most elementary particles. I'll see you there, and in the meantime, do good smart.